السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أنا أسامة رجب مدرس الرياضة العصبية جامعة طنطا النهاردة هنتكلم عن الإبليسي وده محاضرة موجهة لطلبة الفرقة الخامسة في كلية الطب first of all we have to define epilepsy epilepsy is a disease of recurrent and profound seizure despite this and all the definition we we should use it for your undergraduate So what do we mean by seizure? Simple, simply, seizure is a transient event that includes symptoms or signs of abnormal, excessive, hypersynchronous activity in the brain. To define it, if I have, uh, if I have a group of neuron cells, these neuron cells at one time have an excessive hypersynchronized activity, will result in abnormal. Neurological signs and symptom. This is the seizure. Seizure resulted from abnormal, excessive, hypersynchronized neuronal activity, which resulted in abnormal signs and symptom. These signs and symptom has a clear onset and a clear offset, with event of uh, symptom during the seizure similar every time. They have they have the similar semiology every time. Every time, this is the seizure. If this seizure is recurrent, we diagnose epilepsy. Recently, the definition of the epilepsy have been changed. So, epilepsy is diagnosed when one of the three, uh, three, these three items is fulfilled. The first one, at least, the patient has to unprovoked or reflex seizure. With 24 hour apart. What we mean by unprovoked or reflex? Unprovoked means that it has no precipitating factor, while reflex means that it has a precipitating factor, such as reading epilepsy. The patient has seizure or fits when he began to read his newspaper or a book. If the patient has one unprovoked seizure or one reflex seizure, but there is a high possibility of this seizure will recur in the next 10 years, the patient will have epilepsy. Or if I diagnosis of the epilepsy based on epilepsy syndrome. If the patient has epilepsy syndrome, which is a group of seizure, this seizure um, diagnosed one of the our epilepsy syndrome, so the patient will have an Epilepsy. What is the etiology of the epilepsy? Epilepsy may be idiopathic, means that there is no underlying cause, or cryptogenic. Cryptogenic means that there is a cause, but the investigation can't reach this cause, or maybe asymptomatic, which means that there is underlying cause which I can localize. It may be localized to the brain, or to maybe a systemic cause. Localized causes in the brain include congenital causes such as cortical degenesis or arterial venous malformation or traumatic brain injury or infection such as herpes simplex encephalitis, for example, or meningitis, vascular causes such as stroke or brain tumor such as gliomas or meningiomas, or genetic disorder such as Alzheimer's disease. Systemic cause such as hypoxia, hypoglycemia, alkalosis, drug intoxication, all of these can cause epilepsy. What about the origin of the epileptic discharge? And how we classify, classify, can classify, classify epilepsy? Simply, if I have a focus or, or epileptogenic focus localized to one cerebral area, this means that we will have what is called partial epilepsy. But if this activity is spread from this focal area to the dying kephalon, then spread to both cerebral hemisphere, we will have what is called secondary generalized epilepsy, or focal or partial epilepsy with secondary generalization. If the activity is started from the dying kephalon and spread at the same time to both cerebral hemispheres, we will have what is called generalized epilepsy. So, Epilepsy is classified as partial or primary generalized epilepsy or secondary generalized epilepsy. It's partial with secondary generalization. Partial epilepsy may be simple partial or complex partial. It depends on the preservation of the conscious level. 
if conscious level is preserved, the patient will have simple partial. If it is disturbed, will have complex partial. Simple partial or complex partial, partial may be with motor element or sensory element or autonomic element or psychiatric element. Motor element, such as tonic spasm or conic twitches, may be sensory, such as tingling or pain, or autonomic manifestation, such as epigastric pain, or sense modification or maturation, or psychiatric manifestation in the form of fear or atypical psychosis. If one of these symptoms occur associated with disturbed conscious level, we will diagnose complex partial seizure. This is a video to demonstrate focal seizure. Simply, the child has focal twitches of his mouth and around the eye. The patient is conscious and the conscious level is preserved. Let's focus on it. This is simple partial seizure. Okay. Complex partial seizure. It may arise from the temporal loop or the frontal loop. One mandatory criteria to diagnose it is disturbed or clouded conscious level with amnesia. The patient can't recall the event, can't remember the event or the uh, seizure. The patient has a disturbed sensory experience in the form of illusion or hallucination associated with what is called automatism. Automatism is abnormal motor activity with confusion and the amnesia, maybe lip smacking, pedaling, or bicycling. It has a duration of few minutes. Generalized or primary generalized epilepsy, we classify it either petite mal or absence, myoclonic seizure, generalized tonic clonic seizure, tonic seizure, clonic seizure, or atonic seizure. The most common one is generalized tonic clonic seizure. Consists of tonic phase which lasts for several seconds. All the muscles are in tonic spasm, which result in a stop of respiration and sometimes it's called epileptic cry. Followed by chronic phase, which lasts for one or two minutes, then confusion, which may be resist for minutes or hours. This is a video of a child have generalized tonic clinic seizure. We observe Daddy. that the patient is disturbed. Yep, talk to her, darling, that's fine. Twitches, or connect to witches, affected the whole body. It's okay, she's going to work. Keep talking to her, that's okay. Yeah. I didn't see the pretending. No, she's not pretending, darling. Absence seizure or petite mal epilepsy. It is one type of generalized epilepsy. It is frequent and may reach up to 100 attack per day. The attack lasts about 15 to 13 seconds, during which the child is unresponsive and staring. This is a video demonstrating that child with absence epilepsy. Let's concentrate with him. He is studying and observe what will happen. The patient will be begin to have a staring look with unresponsiveness. Yeah. This is the attack yeah. of absence yeah. epilepsy. Yeah. Yeah. Then the patient regain his consciousness and continue what he is doing. This is the attack of absence epilepsy. Even though you're at So, as a clinician, when I face a case like that, to diagnose epilepsy, first of all, I ask a question. Is it epilepsy or not? The diagnosis of epilepsy is a clinical diagnosis. It depends on the description of the attack by the eyewitness. The eyewitness should tell me about the circumstances and the timing and the upsetting factor and the symptom pre the attack and the symptomology of the attack. How is the attack occur? What type of attack? Which movement? What type of movement? Timing which uh, the time of the attack. Okay, and the conscious level after the attack. I have to ask about its medical history, neurological history, psychiatric illness history, and even the female history of epilepsy. Second one is investigation. Here, about the electroencephalogram, which is a confirmatory investigation to confirm the presence of epilepsy. But if the EEG is abnormal, it doesn't, it is normal, it doesn't 
means that the patient is not epileptic. He may be epileptic, but the EEG may be normal. This is an example of EEG. This is a generalized activity. We observe here what is called spike, slow wave activity. This is called spike, and this is slow wave activity, which occur all over the EEG. This means that the patient has a generalized epilepsy. This is an EEG of an absence epilepsy. Okay. After the diagnosis of the epilepsy and the confirming the diagnosis of the epilepsy, we, we should, should search for the etiology of the epilepsy. If I suspecting a local cause, I will, I will do a brain image, either MRI or CT brain. But if I suspect a systemic cause, I will get for systemic investigation. I will search for blood sugar, for uh, hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia, or for hypercalcemia or drug screen if I suspect a systemic cause. The differential diagnosis. The differential, uh, differential diagnosis of general synchronic seizure may be a psychogenic seizure or pseudo seizure. It means that a patient with psychiatric illness or psychosocial stress will have a pseudo seizure, not true one. How can I differentiate it from the true generalized chronic facts? Simply, it has a precipitating factor. The patient has stress, while generalized chronic facts, there is no precipitating factor. Usually, psychogenic seizure occurs in front of audience, never occurs when the patient is alone, and never occurs when the patient is asleep, while generalized chronic facts may occur when the patient is asleep or when the patient is alone. The movement, the movement is typical for general synchronic fit of tonic and clonic, while in psychogenic it is bizarre. I can't define this type of movement. The patient can't speak during the attack of general synchronic fit, but in psychogenic seizure, patient may speak. Patient with psychogenic fits can never hurt himself, never bite his tongue, never mercurate in himself. Usually, he has preserved conscious level with a prolonged duration. EEG usually is normal in patient with psychogenic seizure. Serum prolactin level, which is an investigation, can be done to differentiate between generalized nucleic seizure and psychogenic seizure. It is usually elevated in patient with generalized nucleic seizure, not in patient with psychogenic seizure. But I should I, I should do this investigation so serum liver prolactin as early as possible within the first hours after the seizure. The second item, second disease, I should differentiate it from generalized nucleic seizure is syncope. Syncope usually precipitated by emotional or emotional stress or pain. Usually occur in crowded hot places uh, uh, when patient in upright butcher. It has a gradual onset. The pressing of the patient is usually swallow, uh, shallow and slow. The patient is usually pale, but in general synoclinic seizure, the patient is flushed. The motor phenomena in general synoclinic seizure is typical of uh, colon tonic and clonic, while in syncope there is no motor phenomena. It has a few seconds in syncope, but it lasts minute in general synoclinic fits. Rarely do patient injure himself, and rare to bite his tongue, and rare to maturate. All these events are common in generalized synoclinic seizure. The posterior confusion is common or in generalized synoclinic seizure, while it is absent in syncope. Usually, the patient has a rapid recovery after few seconds. So, treatment of the epilepsy. We have general measures and specific measures. General measures include avoid dangerous situation of epileptic patient, such as driving or swimming or heights. We should encourage patient to have a good quiet sleep and teach the family and patient how to deal with the patient during seizure. We have a specific measures. It include pharmacotherapy, we mean by it anti-epileptic drugs. We have non-pharmacotherapy options include vegan nerve stimulation or epileptic surgery 
or ketogenic diet. We will discuss pharmacotherapy, vegan nerve stimulation. Simply, we implant a device around the vagus nerve, the left one, which will deliver impulses to the brain to inhibit seizure. Surgery means that we will localize the epileptogenic uh, focus by means of uh, neuroimaging and the electrophysiology and we will exercise it. Ketogenic diet, it means that uh, I will induce acidosis by depending on high fat diet, fat content diet to induce acidosis which will protect against seizure. Pharmacotherapy using anti-epileptic drugs has some principles we should follow. First of all, we would start anti-epileptic drug when seizures are recurrent. After diagnosis of epilepsy, we will choose one drug better than two drugs. We will start by low doses, then increase it gradually. We always check the compliance of the patient. If the patient is not taking his medication, is his missing doses, we will check the compliance and confirm it by the serum drug level. Which type of drug should I choose? Simply, if the patient has a partial seizure or partial with, with or without uh, second degeneration, I will choose carbamazepine or phenytoin or oxacarbamazepine or lamotrigine or tobinamide. But if the patient has primary generalized nucleic fits, the choice is falbroate, lamotrigine, and phenytoin. The petite mal or absence of epilepsy, I will choose falbroate and fluxamide. This is the doses of the anti epileptic drug for recommended doses, target doses, daily doses to reach in a patient with epilepsy. Here we will discuss what is called a status epilepticus. This is a life threatening condition. It means that the patient has a continuous seizure activity for five minutes or more without regaining of conscious level. Or the patient has two fits to recurrent seizure without regaining conscious level in between. This is a medical emergency. If I face patient with continuous seizure activity lasted for five minutes without signs of regaining of conscious level, this means that the patient has a status epilepticus. But, or, if the patient has a recurrent seizure, two attacks or more, and the patient hasn't regained his conscious level in between, this is means that the patient has a status epilepticus. This is a medical emergency, a life-threatening situation. Its management is critical. The patient should be managed in neurocritical care. We have to deal with EPC airway, blood pressure, circulation. For life support, we should ensure airway, ensure that the patient blood pressure is okay and circulation is entered. Then we can supply oxygen through nasal cannula on mask. We will put patient on ECG monitoring and begin glucose infusion. Glucose infusion to save the neuron, to rescue the neuron, because neuron depends on glucose and the oxygen in the metabolism so supply glucose to rescue the neuron and maybe patient has hypoglycemia to correct it then we take a sample of his blood for investigation for electrolytes and toxicology screen and assessment of drugs if, if the patient is an, an, uh, taking anti electric drugs then we have to stop the seizure to abort the seizure, we can use benzodiazepine or phenobarbitone, either midazolam or lorazepam, phenobarbital or diazepam. After aborting the seizure, we will go to a second line of therapy, which consists of infusion of phenytoin or falpuric acid or levetiracetam. If the seizure continues despite of using this second line therapy, I can repeat this therapy again or go to general anesthesia through cyapintal or propofol. I will in uh, the patient will be in 
uh, in, induced anesthesia, induced coma by serpentile or proof or I will use general anesthesia to stop electrical activity and seizure activity in the brain. Intractable epilepsy. Simply, if the seizure persists despite treatment with at least two drugs at reasonable dosage, the patient I tried with him two anti-epileptic drugs with a sufficient dose for a sufficient period of time but is still having seizure. This means that the patient has intractable epilepsy. The treatment of this intractable epilepsy consists of First of all, I have to revise my diagnosis. Maybe I choose a patient who is not epileptic. The patient is not uh, having the correct type of epilepsy. So to avoid my anti-epileptic drugs, he may be absent epilepsy, for example, and I tried carbamazepine. So he is not controlled because my choose uh, the drug which I choose to treat him is uh, not suitable one. So first of all, I have to revise these items. If I revise this item and they were okay, and the patient is compliant and taking his medication, so I will try ketogenic diet, or polystherapy with another drug, or vegan nerve stimulation, or use epileptic surgery. Last item in our uh, lecture today is the epilepsy and pregnancy. If the patient have epilepsy and get pregnant. Pregnancy may exacerbate seizure and patient will, uh, patient will have experience more seizure during the pregnancy or the seizure will decrease during the pregnancy or there will be no change in the rate of seizure during the pregnancy. This is the three scenarios which will occur, either increasing the rate or decreasing the rate of seizure or no change on the rate of seizure. If the patient is a pregnant and she is an anti-epileptic drug, what is the risk of teratogenicity? Simply, some drugs are teratogenic, such as uh, valproate and epinutin phenytoin. But if the patient is one of the uh, is in, on anti in taking the anti-epileptic drug and they become pregnant, we shouldn't stop it because. The risk of the teratogenicity is less than the harm of the epilepsy itself. If the patient is pregnant, we should use anti-epileptic drugs which has uh, less teratogenicity such as uh, carbamazepine or levetiracetam or lamotrigine. We should use folic acid to prevent uh, neural tube defect. We should continue with these drugs. We should we shouldn't stop these anti-epileptic drugs during the pregnancy because if seizure occur, it will be harmful to the patient than stoppage of anti-epileptic drugs. Then continuing anti-epileptic drugs. Simply, we should continue anti-epileptic drug during the pregnancy, not stopping it. Uh, Thank you for listening to me.